Let's switch gears now and talk about the charity work and things that you've done outside of wrestling. You are just an incredible motivational speaker. I've got to listen to watch several of your videos on Instagram, spreading that positivity as we do here on the podcast. Let's talk about your your charity, Champions of Choice. What made you decide to get started with this? Well, you know, um, gosh, it's really strange. And it was not, never something I, I set out to do. What happened was um, I, I started my own uh, fitness club, personal training studio, and I got a call from Melbourne High School football coach. And he just wanted me to come and speak to their, the football players, you know, like 40, 50 of them. I don't care, remember. And uh, just about, you know, not doing drugs and, you know, staying, you know, working hard in, in, in their sport and blah, blah, blah. So I went and did that. And, and, but, and it was funny because I got a lot of um, emails back from the, from the football players saying, man, that really changed my life. It really inspired me. I thought, oh, that's so cool. But unbeknownst to me, they called another school and said, hey, we had Mark Merrill come and speak to our, our, our athletes. And that school said, well, let them come speak to the whole school. And that's how it started, man. And then it just snowballed. One school called another. I, I very so the only thing I only advertise my do is, Hey, uh, schedule me for next year or whatever, you know, coming up or whatever. And, and now this is my 18th year presenting at schools coming up in, in September, my 18th year, it's just 18 amazing. years. Yeah. Thousands of schools. And, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of students all over the all of the world i mean I, i've been to russia guatemala puerto rico uh, all over the united states and canada been to almost every state now um except alaska now if you're out there from alaska come on get me out there <laughs> yeah, book them now i mean book come them, on yes. you're, you're missing out if you're not yeah we're, we're real busy in september october so we do have some open openings so don't miss it yes so what are some things that you talk about when you're when you're talking to students well you know stanley a lot of kids are dealing with and it's not just kids it's adults it's 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 the it's the the, the world we live in today you know with a lot of people dealing with depression anxiety uh being bullied or abused self-harming you know um suicidal thoughts these are all relevant issues i speak about at schools and some of them are my own personal uh things i went through where i was in such depression and and, and wanted to end it all. And I, I, I just thank God every day I didn't make that decision because I tell people that you never know how things, how fast things can change. And I never would have known all the beautiful things that would come in my life if I would have made that horrible decision back then. Uh, new friendships, new love, new happiness, new peace, and a purpose in my life that you have no idea how fast things can change. And it's almost like God assigns people in your life that show up just when you need them. So please, if you're out there and going through a hard time, just don't give up, man. I promise you after every storm, the sun will eventually shine. Yes. Do you care to share or care to elaborate more about the struggles that you went through? Well, you know, losing my, my mother and my brother two weeks apart, my mom was only 58. My brother was only 21. It really had a profound effect on me. And then um, a few years later, of course, going through the divorce with, with Sable was really heartbreaking. Um, and then um, losing my dad, you know, my my best friend. Uh, uh, it was just one thing after another. It's like the perfect storm of, and then getting divorced and going through a financial, um, just bad choices and st still living like I'm making a lot of money, but I wasn't. And, and uh, it, it, it was like, Everything that could go wrong was going wrong in my life. And I just felt, man, all alone that I had to sell my beautiful home. And I had a, um, I, I didn't know what I was going to do next. And it just got to the point where I just, um, I'll never forget it. It was Christmas Day and I, I drove to Cocoa Beach, Florida, and I sat under a pier on Christmas Day. I mean, the day we celebrate with friends and family and and the Christmas the tree ones. And, the, and the music and the food and fellowship and the birth of our savior, you know, and I sat under a pier and watched the waves roll in, roll out. And that's when I contemplated the end. And I tell you, if it wasn't for me getting on my knees and asking God in my life, I don't know what would have happened, but man, everything changed. And, and it doesn't, it doesn't change instantly, you know? And the other thing I want to share is that I've been 21 years clean now, because that, that was the day I've never touched a drug since then, you know? And, and, and the drug of my choice was cocaine back then. I was just an addict. 
And man, just being clean from that and free from that, you know, it just gives your life so much meaning because now you can help people because people say, I don't know how I can get off this or that or, 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 you know, um, pain medication or whatever it is, you know, and it's just wanting to change your life and, and, and realizing that whether it's a 10 step program or AA or, or, or counseling or whatever it's going to take, everybody's a little different, you know, and there's no one thing that fits all, you know, and mine was my faith in God, you know, my, that, that just changed everything for me. And so whatever it is, find out what it is that's going to help your life because we're all different. We all look at things differently. We may not have the same faith. You know, we, you may be able to go to an AA meeting and, and listen to someone speak there and go, wow, I want to have what they have, or I want to change the way this person changed. So the main thing is, is it's just don't quit, man. Just don't quit. No, I mean, life is about struggle and it can be stressful at times. And all you have to do is just keep pushing forward, find something that's meaningful to you to keep yourself going. And, and with this wonderful cause, I mean, it seems like it's definitely helped you get past all the negativity. You know, it's through our struggles we find our strength. And I look at the stage as my as is is like um almost like my therapy every day, you know, that I can get there and share from my heart something I went through that's going to help someone in the audience that's listening to me right now. I can't tell you how many kids I, I get messed from the game of vaping, even, you know, that they realize that that is is when that first comes out, it's like it's safe, it's okay. You know, now we're seeing kids getting cancer from vaping. We're seeing how the mixtures that are going to this. I mean, you can't have 50 chemicals that taste like strawberry or watermelon and be safe. It just doesn't happen. And now we're seeing the detrimental effects of how it's destroying kids' lungs from vaping. And so we're seeing more and more kids getting off even vaping from my presentations. It's horrifying to hear about the the dangers of drugs, alcohol, smoking, and just everything, you know, vaping. You just mentioned that. I mean, we need people to like what you're doing right now to tell these these young people because they're our future they are the ones that are going to take over in society that this stuff is not okay yeah you know one of the things i i recognize stanley is that i go to all these schools and they have wonderful counselors because i often meet with counselors before my presentation to discuss uh because a lot of kids are going to want to see them after the presentation and they have some wonderful counselors but schools don't have um, medical health specialists. And and they may have one for a whole uh, county or something, you know, where a kid might have to wait four to five months to meet with a, 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 a health, a health uh, advisor, you know, someone that could help with mental health issues. And I think every school should have mental health uh, provide provision for people for kids that can go and see someone that's that they're dealing with this anxiety or depression because the counselor's not always able to to understand some of the things like especially some of the drugs that kids are on today whether it's Adderall or something that they they never heard of or or knew of before this you know yeah 